Okay, everyone, welcome back uh, for our next session. We're going to have more of a round table discussion, I think, um, that's going to be hosted by uh, Ed Nest and Warner Losh. So I'm going to turn it over to Ed Warner um, to talk specifically about pre commit CI. I should say that part. All right, thanks, John. Um, so I'm going to drive the slides, and I think Warner is going to um, talk through the um, the early parts here, and I have a bit of discussion on um, as one of our specific uh, implementations. Yeah, that's uh, the plan. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so um, Ed and I have put together a kind of a working group for the continuous integration. Um, we've had some good uh, progress in improving our workflow since we've uh, adopted Git, uh, and those efforts have uh, stalled a little bit lately. Uh, I have uh, was leading some meetings and it was just a bunch of people talking and we never really were accomplishing anything. So I stopped doing that. Um, and we're hoping to jumpstart the process by focusing on one aspect of things, namely our um, continuous integration strategy and how we can uh, improve continuous integration coverage um, from the current post commit stuff we have to um, pre-commit um, and how we can uh, you know, deal with that. Um, this talk will also talk um, about um, the current solutions that are in FreeBSD. Ed will be talking about that as well as um, some examples of how individuals can use that uh, as well and a roadmap and then a round table discussion at the end. Next slide, please. Um, and again, the, 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 the main motivation is we need to engage more people or new people to uh, do this work. Um, there's a lot of people with uh, expertise in this area, but they haven't been um, they haven't been showing up. And so we were hoping to uh, say, hey, we're trying to get this going and uh, kind of flip the bits in people's mind from, hey, nothing's happening to you. Something's happening and I want to be part of that. Um, in general, there's been really widespread support for doing something like this. There's a few people who are unsure or, um, you know, they're used to the old ways and they're not sure what pre-commit CI would uh, buy for them. But by and large, people really want this. Um, we just have uh, suffered from a lack of people willing to uh, work on it and be committed to working on it. Um, and you know, our, we, we do currently have CI in the project. It's primarily post commit. If you break something, you'll get email. Um, and there's a, a number of ways that people can also opt in to do pre-commit things. Um, Ed has set up uh, Sarah CI. He'll talk about that here in a couple of minutes. Um, but the testing that it does is uh, more of a smoke test. You know, just, hey, did it work or not? not uh, is it fully functional and doesn't meet all the specs and so forth. And so we'd like to um, uh, transition uh, from you know, the current minimal bare bones to uh, something a little bit more substantial. Uh, and before we get started, we also have to um, acknowledge that you know, FreeBSD is special and different here. I know that um, there's a lot of people who have had um, you know, who think that you know FreeBSD does their own thing and uh, it shouldn't. And in a lot of time cases, you know, th that's a fair point. But when you're QAing a full OS, that's hard. Linux full QA system um, has been uh, years in the making and just started more recently. And so we should expect to have to uh, build it out incrementally. Um, we're not going to have something that's perfect out of the gate. But we really, um, we really don't want the let the perfect be the enemy of the good, or the perfect of be the enemy of the improved. Um, so we're hoping to make incremental changes that uh, improve things for everybody. Uh, next slide, please. So at a lower level, why do we want to do pre-commit CI if all the testing is done in post-commit? Why does it matter? Well. Um, if you do your testing before you commit, that re greatly reduces the number of bugs that make it into the system. That greatly reduces the number of regressions. And so if we can force that to be done up front, a number of at least the common breakages will be avoided 
everybody who's been a developer and has pulled the FreeBSD source tree has had the experience at least once of checking out all the sources, typing make, and it doesn't build and going, okay, is that a, a bug in the upgrade? Is that something weird on my system? Is that just something somebody broke in the tree and you don't know and you get defocused from the thing you were going to do with the build into now debugging the build? And so if we can get you know the build breakages um, taken care of to as large an extent as possible, um, that will also help our developers make more efficient use of the time they have for the project, which sometimes can be quite limited. Uh, and it will, um, but, but to get all the benefits from this, we're gonna have to further evolve the project's um, <laughs> workflow so that um, people get used to, rather than uh, I make a change, I commit, I push, which is kind of the old uh, subversion, old CVS, workflow into, well, I make a series of changes, maybe on a branch and I submit them, I push them to a, a test repo or um, you know some repository that has testing facilities built in like GitHub or GitLab. Uh, and then when that's done, they will land in the tree either through some automation or you know I have all the ticky boxes and so I do it myself. Um, there'll be a number of degrees of improvement along the way, but until we have um, you know, a, a bunch of CI tests that developers can run and a bunch of C, uh, a CI infrastructure that'll run those tests in a stylized environment, um, you know, we won't be able to have a little ticky box that says merge this request um, as much as people might like that. Um, and by the way, the little ticky box phrase is TM John Baldwin. Next slide, please. So, um, this is where I think Ed will take over. Um, if I remember right, Ed, this is where we're going to yeah. end off. Yeah, I so think I'll so. Let Ed talk now. So this is um, uh, just a brief overview of what we, um, what solutions we have uh, today, and uh, we we have some level of pre-commit build and test um, uh, in the tree, both relying on the the GitHub mirror. So um, we have a. a um, continuously updated uh, Git mirror on GitHub um, that, that tracks uh, FreeBSD source of truth, uh, cgit.freebsd.org, um, git.freebsd.org, um, and uh, accepts pull requests. Um, Warner and I had a little discussion about um, it, it being good that we don't call it a read-only mirror um, because you know, it, it is, um, it doesn't accept changes directly through GitHub's infrastructure, but um, we do bring changes in via pull requests um, on occasion. And there's a, a, a reasonably usable workflow to for developers to take changes that are in pull requests um, and, and bring them into the tree. Um, and these solutions um, uh, can run on, um, on pull requests uh, against the GitHub mirror as well. So the two, uh, two tools that we have integrated right now uh, our cross builds on macOS and Linux um, via GitHub Actions and Cirrus CI um, executing native FreeBSD builds. Um, and, and the Cirrus approach um, uses a FreeBSD VM running on uh, uh, Google, uh, Google Cloud and executes a boot smoke test um, uh, inside of QMU. So it builds a, a basic image and makes sure that the kernel at least boots and comes up. Um, to get gets to single user basically and just immediately shuts down and says everything's okay. Um, the GitHub cross builds are kernel only um, uh, kernel only builds, um, and uh, the Cirrus CI. Um, I did most of the initial work to get that going in FreeBSD. Alex Richardson and Jess, I think, are the the primary ones um, from Cambridge who did the GitHub Actions uh, work as part of their broader interest in in cross build uh, in general. Um, let's see here. Um, so there's a question right now and, and Warner, I, I think we, we wanna have this fairly interactive. So if there's um, questions, we should, I, I'm happy to take them sort of as we go through and um, uh, you know, hop in with, with answers as well if there's, there's stuff here. Okay. The, question, the question is, who's the target audience for the, the, this work? How hard is it to set up the pipeline for someone without a commit bit? Um, and so I'm, I'm going to uh, touch on that already. So that will be um, uh, 
answered throughout uh, in just a moment. Um, but uh, I think it is that is a very, very good question. And um, uh, the I, I would say I will I will say that the, the target audience is both FreeBSD developers who have the ability to push changes in um, and just sort of um, want to simplify their own workflow. That's that's kind of what drove my initial interest in getting Cirrus going. Um, you know, I um, uh, for for larger changes, um, I spent a you know the the kind of historical um, uh, use the historical workflow that previous developers have have often used um, of building in a whole new image and deploying it and testing it out and everything. Um, but for a lot of trivial, um, uh, relatively small changes, um, you know, where I would, might have built them in a very hacky approach before, um, I just have a uh, work in progress branch that I push to um, uh, on GitHub and just rely on Cirrus um, uh, testing it for me. So, um, uh, oh. So, Ed, there was another yeah. question that's come up about um, that's probably relevant at this point. Uh, did you encounter what problems did you encounter with Linuxisms and the common CI CD pipelines? Yeah, um, and so that 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 is a. Um, uh, a good question. Um, uh, so the two that we have right now, Cirrus is probably, um, I would say, the only um, hosted CI as a service um, that is a, is very sort of OS agnostic. Um, it works really well with FreeBSD, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Um, and uh, I'll show the how, how we integrate with, with Cirrus. Um, uh, and so, it, you know, it, it, there, there's basically no Linuxisms to deal with in, in the kind of Cirrus CI workflow with FreeBSD. Um, uh, the, um, uh, GitHub Actions cross-build um, stuff is, is it, it, it was added explicitly to test FreeBSD's cross-build. Um, and so the Linuxisms are, are a feature, not a bug in that case. Um, but yeah, certainly, um, uh, certainly that is a very um, Linux, you know, container centric view of the world. Um, and so we have, so we, we can go over the config files for both and kind of see that. Uh, yeah, Warner? I was going to add that um, since we can't run natively in um, GitHub that because it is very Linux centric or to a lesser extent kind of OS, um, sorry, Mac OS tolerant. Um, it, uh, we have some workarounds that allow us to do things, but we'll get into, um, yeah. you know, what those workarounds are and what the implications are later in the talk as well. Um, and that's a, definitely a case where the Linux isms are uh, not so much isms, but centrism, you know, centric uh, yeah. environments that make it uh, a little bit harder for us to just, you know, drop this thing in and have a, a solution that everybody else uses. And so mm -hmm. that's what been one of the problems that we've had in standing this up is that, you know, it's not, oh yeah, we'll write a half a dozen lines of YAML and everything will be fine. Um, you know, we have to, you know, drop down a couple of layers and get into runners and all of these other things. And then how, how much do you integrate that with the main system and so forth? So that's um, quite a bit larger problem than, hey, I have a new, um, open source thing, it runs on Linux. I'll just add the CI pipelines, boom, I'm done, that you can get with GitHub integration today. Yeah. So um, my, my slides here have a couple of screenshots from Cirrus's uh, website um, and uh, CirrusCI.org. Um, so it's a hosted CI service, um, which means they, they run it. Um, it's a, a CI, CI AAS, um, basically, um, and relies on all of the metadata for how to execute the um, the tests and the builds and the, the actual CI steps um, are contained in a file um, within the the repository itself. Um, there is a bit of metadata you can uh, you can control externally. You can set environment variables and things for individual builds and such. But but generally speaking, the actual um, information about what is a CI run uh, is contained within the um, uh, contained within the, the repository itself. Um, and uh, it really only works with GitHub um, uh, right now. There are some workarounds that are, are more or less hacky to, to integrate with others. Um, 
but um, but really it's uh, it's intended to be used right now with with GitHub as the only one that sort of properly works with out of the box. Um, with with that those one, caveats, it's uh, my experience with with, with Cirrus CI has been excellent. Yeah, Warner. I was going to say, Alan Summers has a question that I think is great to ask right now, which is, what advantages do, does GitHub Actions have over Cirrus, and why not test the cross build using uh, Cirrus too? Um, yeah, that's, that is a good question. Um, so I don't know that there's um, a huge advantage to GitHub Actions. Um, you know, I mean, I suppose one possible um, uh, one possible um, benefit is being able to kind of shard the CI load across different services. Um, so Cirrus, Cirrus CI for open source projects provides um, uh, a, a certain amount of concurrent free um, uh, CI jobs. So uh, across there, they have a, a community cluster that um, basically services um, CI runs for all sort of free unpaid open source uh, projects. Um, and so if there's too much waiting, um, you know, your jobs might back up waiting for capacity on the community um, cluster. And you can only have so many of your own jobs running in the, the free service at a time. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we, right now, when we have a, a, a test build via GitHub, um, the, the, the Cirrus job and the GitHub uh, Actions jobs will all run at the same time on completely different different services. Um, that said, Cirrus does support um, Mac OS and Windows and Linux um, builds, and we certainly could um, we certainly could mirror some of the um, uh, some of the build into um, uh, into Cirrus the, the, the things that we, we currently run on GitHub Actions. Um, so let me just, uh, yeah, so if I look, if we go back uh, one slide, let's see that work. Can I go back? Um, yeah, so you can see here, um, this, this is what you'll see, you know, on a, either a pull request or on a, um, an individual commit in your own repo, um, that all of this, the, the individual um, uh, three uh, GitHub actions at the top and, and three, um, Cirrus CI tasks uh, at the bottom. Um, they, they, re they report the same way. So from a you know, sort of user interface perspective, um, you know, all of the individual tests get reported or individual jobs get reported the, in the same interface. Um, and it doesn't really matter if it was uh, GitHub Actions or, or Cirrus. I think one difference is that the GitHub Actions will only file a pull request or a push to like, a, like the real main branch which only happens on the mirrored pushes that come out of our main repo. Whereas Cirrus, if you have a work branch and you're doing changes on your work branch, Cirrus fires on those all the time. Okay. And, and the other, you get a little better um, when you have a complicated um, pipeline, you get a little bit better uh, reporting of that um, on GitHub and a, little, and a little bit better integration if you're doing it all with GitHub Actions rather than farming it out to runners or um, third parties like Sarah CI. It's not a huge advantage. Um, the advantage is bigger with GitLab because its uh, pipeline is a little bit nicer and you can have more fine-grained control. But mm -hmm. um, you know that is, that is one of the reasons why we might want to use um, uh, you know, have something that gives us a little bit better uh, user experience, even yeah. though we get the same functionality with Zero CI. Well, what, one of the other um, one of the other potential benefits uh, may may as well be that for FreeBSD downstream consumers, you know, people who are building products on on FreeBSD, um, if they want to use hosted CI services um, and they already have uh, experience with Zero uh, CI, say, or already have experience with GitHub Actions, um, you know, they may well want to continue using the same. Uh, environment and and um, so it's it's useful for us at least um, as the upstream to have examples um, in both uh, in both schemes. Um, this is just a very brief uh, com uh, uh, comparison from uh, you know potentially biased. It's from Cirrus's own website, but uh, the you know the um, uh, the thing that's very compelling for us is that Cirrus CI is the only uh, hosted. Um, uh, CI service that that advertises and has good good uh, good quality um, you know 
tier one for BSD support. Yeah, Brooke, uh, Brooks Davis also added in the Zoom chat that I'm, I'm saying for the people on YouTube that um, the resources are fairly limited on Sarah CI because it's not a, isn't owned by a top 10 cloud provider um, compared to what you can get from uh, GitHub Actions. So we'll be, we'll have a slower turnaround time potentially when if we use Sarah CI, particularly if, as we make heavier and heavier use of it um, in the future. I mean, um, my experience has been that uh, I very rarely run into concurrency limits um, with, with Cirrus. Um, uh, and I'll show an example of, of one of the jobs in, in, in the, uh, a moment. But in any case, certainly it's, you know, there's value in us having, having both. Um, yeah, so I agree. Th this, is, this is basically uh, just shows how Cirrus integrates with, um, uh, with our repository. So, uh, as, a, as an individual user, if you have a FreeBSD source um, fork on GitHub, um, you, you would add Cirrus as an application and give it access to your repository to, to be able to see your commits. And so what happens is um, a, a commit gets pushed to GitHub either in your own repository as, uh, or as a pull request. Um, Cirrus CI gets notified of that new change. It picks up the .cirrus.yaml file um, out of your repository, which tells it what jobs to, to run, um, whether it's going to be in VMs for, as for FreeBSD or, or containers or Mac OS uh, uh, VMs. Um, and then it runs the, the actual tests that are, are defined there and um, then sends those results back and they're reported in the, um, uh, in the uh, GitHub UI for that, that commit. Um, Okay, so yeah, just the, the places that it, it can run. Um, so it, it does run on the main FreeBSD repository. Um, uh, so it picks up, um, picks up commits there. Um, individual developers uh, can add it uh, as an application to their own, their own fork. It runs on pull requests. Um, and Cirrus also has support for, um, for scheduled tasks, which is something we might want to, to look at for um, the plethora of different types of build integrations we, we um, uh, we want to support. Um, and so if you look at the .cirrus.yaml file um, in the tree, um, this is on main um, here. And basically, uh, I'm just going to point out a couple of um, salient points in, in here. Um, there's, uh, you know, if you, if you want to see the full details, have a look at the file and the history and whatnot. Um, but this defines basically how our tests um, are going to be executed, what, what sort of environment they're executed in. And in this case, um, it's a Google uh, um, Google Compute Engine um, uh, VM, and we are asking for a FreeBSD 13.1 image um, with eight CPUs and eight gigs of memory. Um, eight, eight CPUs is the maximum that um, we're able to, to request in this, um, this configuration. Uh, and then these are the three tasks that are defined. Um, the, uh, the first one, is the uh, x86 uh, build and boot smoke test. Um, and then there's two that are uh, triggered manually um, that don't execute automatically. Um, there's a ARM64 build and a cross build using the, or a, um, a GCC build using the, um, uh, the, tool chain, uh, the GCC toolchain package. All, uh, all three of them actually rely on installing um, either LLVM or GCC from ports um, just to avoid the, uh, the extra time of, of building a compiler each um, each time, uh, and I mentioned um, the cron or scheduled uh, tasks before. Um, this is something I'd, I'd like to like to try and do with like the ARM64 and GCC builds. Um, I don't think I think there's a lot of value in being able to have a um, really quick smoke test um, just on on every commit or on every pull request, um, but uh, I think it's a waste of resources to, to run every single possible um, task against every single possible commit. Um, and then the actual, um, uh, the actual run itself, um, basically uh, we have a, I have a script that uh, gives, it takes a list of packages um, and installs them. Um, and this is uh, due to some flakiness in the, um, uh, the package uh, mirror itself. Um, uh, so it's a you know, that's a workaround for um, for our own infrastructural problems, I think. But um, 
uh, we don't want that to, to end up blowing up our uh, CI run. Um, then basically, um, uh, Cirrus by default, I think as, as do most of the, um, uh, the hosted services, um, they're running you. They're running in either your own ephemeral VM or container or whatever, and so they just do everything as root. If you if you want to do um, anything uh, as a user, it's up to you to kind of um, uh, to take care of that yourself. And so uh, for us, I think it, you know it, it is very important that we are able to um, build as a user and operate against a read-only source repository. So. Um, but that's the, the bit of extra um, uh, mess in the setup script there. And then effectively, we just run um, uh, make build world uh, build kernel packages and then uh, tools boot CI commute commutest.sh is the script that actually um, installs the, the packages in a virtual disk image and runs them in QMU. Um, and so this is what the, the end result um, looks like. This is what you'll see for. Um, Every pull request or um, or commit uh, on the Cirrus side. So if you click on the little uh, icon that shows up in in the GitHub uh, results, it takes you to this page. And then um, you can click on the individual uh, individual tasks that are listed here, and it will show you the the, um, uh, the, the, the scripts that make up that task. Um, so if something fails, for example, you'll see. You know the checkout or the clone was successful and the package install was successful and the build was successful but the boot was boot failed or or whatnot um and uh yeah that's 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 my quick overview of the um uh cirrus uh ci integration in freebsd um i'll just cover the github actions um very briefly um and then um i think we have some uh roadmap discussions and things, but that's probably a good uh, opportunity for more discussion and, um, and such. Um, GitHub Actions works basically the same way. Um, uh, oh, so, so as we mentioned earlier, um, GitHub Actions really is, is focused on Linux containers and Mac OS VMs, um, at least in the FreeBSD context, that's what we're using. Um, there is no direct FreeBSD support in, in GitHub Actions directly. Um, there is some work in progress and various hacks and workarounds to try and uh, to get there. Um, so I have three links here um, of, of ways to try and uh, integrate FreeBSD into GitHub Actions, and, and hopefully in the future um, that will be will be uh, something that we can support natively. But uh, but right now um, I think for our, what we really care about uh, the cross build support via that is is just fine. And so it's the same kind of approach. It's metadata um, within the uh, repository itself. And so it's mostly self-explanatory. On main and stable 13, um, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna run um, as well as on pull requests on main. Uh, and then specify the, the individual jobs. Um, and so instead of providing a VM as we did in the FreeBSD case on Cirrus, um, we're asking for uh, containers um, uh, on Ubuntu. Um, for example, here, and then same idea again. Um, the individual steps for um, setting up packages that are are um, prerequisites for whatever build we're going to run, and then the um, the actual uh, build and or test commands. In this case, um, you can see we're just running build kernel, uh, doing uh, Linux uh, build kernels. Um, so I, that that's the. What I had for the kind of overview of, of things. Um, let's see what's on the, uh, the Q&A here. Yeah, we have a few questions here before um, we sh should get into the roadmap talk. Um, DCH is asking about uh, Cirrus allowing uh, BYO agents and having an ARM64 um, runner, um, you know, because Ampere has expressed interest in further hardware contributions, is that a possibility? Yeah, so I mean, I think this, that is, that is certainly, um, uh, um, certainly a, something that, that's, you know, very much a possibility. We can, um, uh, right now we're sort of um, uh, reliant on um, uh, the fact that Cirrus, uh, Cirrus, is very generous in, in providing um, the VM resources and such that they do. Um, but 
yeah, I think, you know, I, I think we can, we can absolutely um, provide our own hardware, provide a Cirrus uh, runner or agent on there and connect it into um, uh, having Cirrus um, execute that. Um, I think that's, that's a good roadmap um, discussion and um, uh, something I think that we, uh, in the same way that I think it, you know, for an upstream operating system, there's a lot of value in us supporting different approaches. Um, you know, I think I think that is something that would be valuable for us to support, even if we also um, provide our, our own um, uh, entire, you know, our, our own sort of end-to-end -end, um, uh, CI and integration workflow um, that doesn't rely on external services. Um, I see Alan says, are there limits to how many serious builds we get per time period um, is buying more a reasonable option. So Cirrus does have um, uh, paid plans as well. Um, uh, I, so I, I think the, um, I think we are constrained by, um, uh, you know, potential uh, concurrency limits on their open source resources. Um, but uh, uh, I don't think we have a, like, you know, we've run out of our time for the month and, and therefore we're to get no more builds. Um, uh, you know, we, we um, uh, that's, that hasn't happened on uh, FreeBSD uh, main um, uh, to date uh, and, you know, hasn't happened on my own individual builds um, as well. Um, I think it's, I think Cirrus is, um, uh, Sirius has a plan at like ten dollars a month or something that um, that gets you double the amount of uh, of concurrency and, and that's something that's sort of you know would be um, a relatively small cost and, and reasonable to um, uh, for us to to do. Um, but also, I you know as as Dave was asking about earlier, I think if we provide our own um, uh, our own runners, um, our own agents, then it also uh, would reduce the um, the cost and increase the amount of uh, concurrent things we can. We can do. And uh, do any of the hosted CI pipelines support nested virtualization? Um, so conceivably, uh, uh, we could do this um, with Cirrus. Uh, I am. Um, it, it may require a very small feature um, enhancement on their side. It might not. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but basically, uh, you know. It, Basically, Cirrus is um, spinning up a uh, GCP um, uh, VM on our behalf to run our test. Um, and so as long as um, GCP will provide us a VM that's, that has nested virtualization enabled and uh, we, we can make use of it on, on the client side, um, then there's no kind of fundamental reason that that wouldn't work. Um, I, I looked into this um, quite some time ago and I can't recall, I think like the GCP had a, um, uh, a limitation on that, that I think maybe they will only um, claim to support or will only let you run Linux guests, uh, do nested virtualization with Linux guests. Um, but uh, I mean, the, there, may, there may be some hurdles to get there. But fundamentally, I think it is something that is um, is feasible. Uh, see here is. I'm curious if Warner is um, uh, has dropped off. Looks like it's possible. It would seem that that might have happened. Yeah. Presumably, he will come back. Um, we had a question earlier on. Um, that you might want to speak explicitly to, which was, um, so far your talk has been very source focused, but do you also have thoughts about um, CI and ports and doc? Yeah, so, um, I mean, uh, we had a little discussion about this on, on IRC and doc um, does have Cirrus um, integrated uh, already and, and gives you a little green check mark, um, at least that it builds. Uh, my question was, uh, you know, in in um, in source, we're we're doing this little boot smoke test. Um, that's a very um, 
uh, very limited kind of uh, level of testing, but is, um, I mean, on the one hand, it's a fairly limited test. On the other hand, uh, you know, it, 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 it's very good at catching kind of gross errors um, if, uh, if your kernel, kernel is deep. Um, uh, it's a little bit un less clear what it means for a doc tree to, to pass its tests. Um, um, but I mean, certainly at least verifying that, um, you know, it's, it, it's able to render properly and everything uh, and give you uh, um, the, the, the doc build is successful is, is something um, that makes a lot of sense. And, and this exact same approach in source works, works well in docs. Um, in ports, I think, you know, there's no reason we couldn't fundamentally do the same thing. Um, uh, uh, ports to some extent, um, so, source is, is in some ways, as Warner mentioned, a very challenging um, uh, case for CI and testing um, because we're building a whole new OS and um, need to either run it in, in a VM or in, on bare metal somehow and need to have, figure out how to get it there. Um, in, um, in ports, as long as we're, you know, if, if our, uh, our ports, uh, if the target is a FreeBSD release or a FreeBSD snapshot that already has an image existing in, in GCP, um, then Cirrus will happily um, get us a VM of that um, and can build the, you know, the specific port um, and, uh, and do whatever sort of testing is, uh, is, is, that exists um, in the ports tree or for that specific port already. Um, the, I think that probably the biggest challenge um, uh, for that is just the um, uh, the kind of scale of um, uh, how you know just how much CPU time is needed um, to do it uh, to build arbitrarily large number of ports, um, and there's no uh, there's no easy built-in sort of way to cache objects between uh, between runs, right? So if um, the, the, the sort of naive approach, you know, you can very easily just add a .serious.yml to the ports tree and have it um, uh, just, you know, go into a specific um, uh, port and, and, and do a build. But um, yeah, I think there's, uh, if we had infinite resources at, at zero cost, um, you know, you could, you could write a, um, you could write a serious serious that just uh, goes to the top of the ports tree and does make and just you know tries to build everything in that um, that way. Um, uh, so clearly, that's not really feasible, especially with um, with the resources that are, are available to us. Um, and so, uh, I think that's something that re will require um, a fair bit more work for us to to have a compelling and, and usable story there. Uh, let's see here. Do we have any other um, other questions on the go? Let's see if I get. Okay. Um, back to. Here's one again. There were, uh, there were hey, some. I'm having no, yeah, I'm having network problem. So there were some comments. Alan Summers had noted um, over here in the Zoom chat that Sirius does have an open ticket to add native ARM64 support for FreeBSD. Um, I guess they they already provide Linux on ARM64 which rather than using GCP uses AWS instances. Mm -hmm. So maybe that will land someday. In which case that'll be much easier to just use to do ARM64 testing with Sirius. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, for the, um, for, I, I think 
it would be useful to have some incidental testing via that route. Um, but for um, for what we're actually executing in Cirrus, um, so we have an ARM64 test job in in um, uh, in Cirrus.yaml today, right? And it just it builds it cross builds from x86 and then runs uh, in QMU. Um, uh, runs the ARM64 image in QMU and does the boot smoke test. Um, and so fundamentally, because, because we're not using uh, any sort of acceleration with QMU on, on x86, it basically is performing the, the same task. Um, uh, and so the, the actual image that we're testing, we get the same sort of coverage regardless of the fact that it's an x86 host, um, other than you know, we, we don't get any incidental um, uh, coverage in that you know, we, we, we sort of, um, we, we get a bunch of incidental testing by virtue of Cirrus CI spinning up lots of FreeBSD uh, x86 13.1 VMs to, to do various um, uh, test runs. I gotcha. Um, and Warner just noted apparently his his ISP had a bad day today, um, so he's trying to five and five G doesn't work quite well enough. So um, we can see your text, Warner. I'll try to relay for you. Did you so? I don't know what I feel like we haven't yet talked about future plans and roadmap. Is that something? Yeah, and so there, there's, there's some... we've got we're, we're actually close to the end of your slot, but I'll let, let it, we can run a little over into the, the break. But let's yeah, I'd like to hear what you, what your plans are for that. Yeah, okay. Um and so um part part of that is sort of um uh we don't have a you know a very concrete set of, of steps. We have some some broad ideas, and uh, our goal is to to kind of um, uh, you know perhaps with some support from the new core team um, reinvigorate the um, uh, the the CI um, and and workflow uh, the, even beyond CI like the 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 workflow um, working group. Um, but anyway, uh, before I get onto that, I'll just quickly go over these. Um, so this is just two other um, um, two other uh, CI uh, approaches or services that could easily support what we um, the same sorts of things that, that we've talked about with Sirius and, and GitHub Actions. Um, and then we also have um, two uh, uh, links to the wiki here. Um, this is generally speaking using um, Cirrus CI or other um, uh, other approaches um, to uh, to run testing on free of, of third party software on FreeBSD. Um, and so there's there's quite a lot of um, of GitHub repos with Cirrus YAML files in them that that run their test suites um, on FreeBSD. Uh, and so I think that's something we definitely want to. Um, encourage and, and support. It's a little bit orthogonal to, um, you know, the, the goal of testing FreeBSD, FreeBSD itself, but I think it is something that overall is is really important for us as a, a project to to make sure that um, uh, third party software continues to build on FreeBSD and get tested. Um, so. Uh, Warner, I think, was going to speak to these. Uh, let me see if uh, if he happens to have enough bandwidth at the moment. Maybe not. Oh. So uh, I, I'll talk a little bit about one of the items on here. Um, second one on the on the list, um, uh, and that is. That right now our approaches to um, um, uh, Cirrus, is, uh, Cirrus specifically, or, or GitHub Actions, is it's a very binary view of what tests need to run, um, you know, for any given pull request or or push to a, a, a repo, um, and uh, the Cirrus. Um, you know, we have manual control over the the GCC or ARM sixty four builds, but basically, it's you know, it's either um, you either get a, a test or you don't, and and um, for smaller projects, that probably makes a lot of sense. It's 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 or it's just fine, right? Um, if your entire test suite takes a minute or two to run, um, then there's no reason you really need to care about subsetting it. Um, it, again, if we if we had sort of infinite resources um, and infinite budget, um, 
you know, we, we could conceivably um, either run, uh, with what we have today, we could extend the smoke test um, and actually just have it create a disk image and run the entire um, uh, test suite that exists in the tree um, in, in, the, in the base system inside of uh, QMU. I mean, it would take an incredibly long time, but, um, you know, conceivably it's, uh, it's possible and would give us, um, uh, give us all of the results. Um, and I think, you know, even, even if we solved the, the problem that um, QMU is slow, say we had nested virtualization, uh, and we could run in Beehive, uh, and um, and you know there, there wasn't a performance issue there. Um, there's still the issue that our full test suite takes a long time to uh, to execute, and you know you don't want to pay that cost. You, you don't want to um, pay that cost if someone pushes a change to fix a man page typo or such. And so you know we need to, to have some way of figuring out what sets of changes are appropriate to what sets of tests are appropriate to run on any given change. Um, yeah, we, then, we need like a meta mode for testing. So when the test is built, only those tests that um, actually changed would then get run. And we don't have anything like that um, today. And we don't have good build optimization even. I mean, those those are individual problems that we can uh, yeah. potentially uh, tackle once we have something that's in place. Something that's suboptimal that we can optimize is better than fretting over... Um, you know, how do we get all of this taken care of and perfect before we go live? So, oh, by the way, I'm back, Ed. <laughs> Thanks, Warner. Yes. Um, do you want to go over the, the other other points on your uh, Warner? Um, so uh, I, I'm not sure how much of this you've you've covered. Um, I, I've talked about the second one basically here. Okay. Um. Yeah, one of the things that would be nice uh, for developers we would get benefit from is if I could type make CI or make test and have it actually run the CI tests. And if it passes locally, it'll pass when I push to the main repository. Or if I push the main repository and it fails, I can run it locally and use that for more fine-grained debugging. Um, there are efforts underway to get this work funded, um, but uh, nothing has been finalized yet. Um, and then um, the other thing is, uh, um, one of the things that would be uh, useful for us to provide is um, some additional um, examples and configuration so that uh, both downstreams uh, can leverage the CI that we have, uh, as well as, um, any project that wants to support FreeBSD, we have kind of some off the shelf recipes that we can use depending on what CI system they have to integrate into their system. Uh, we have some of that today. Um, Lee Wynn um, has a, a page uh, uh, with that that was unfortunately in a prior meeting and I didn't save a link to it. Um, <clears throat> or I would you know, share it on IRC now. Uh, if we win is listening in, he can share maybe on Dev Summit. Um, so, um, so there, there are those things. And um, in order to keep the ball moving, we want to have our next update be at the Developer Summit um, in uh, Vienna at EuroBSDCon. Um, so that's kind of where we're targeting towards having uh, you know, future uh, communication. Um, if you, uh, I know that Lee Wynn is also, he's asked me to run some meetings. I'm not sure how public they will be, but in this area so that we can um, get things, uh, you know, get, get at least some of the testing aspects of this uh, rolling um, as well. Um, I see a question from Alan uh, in the Q&A here. This um, uh, asking whether we have a solution for providing runners or agents or whatever for third-party projects um, that have their own CI uh, uh, CI infrastructure. Um, so, for example, um, uh, the Python has their own CI, and um, uh, Kubes provides a, um, a VM or, or 
a physical machine, I'm not sure, but provides a, a runner that connects to it um, and executes the tests. Um, and uh, other some other projects, LLVM being brought up as, as a prime example of one of these that, that needs this. Um, and I think, you know, the, the answer I think is that we have um, uh, ad hoc individual instances of this, you know, often run by individual um, uh, members of the Fugisti community or such. Um, we don't have a overall, I think, project level view um, of this. The, the, um, uh, the hosted CI um, or third party CI links that I, I shared um, uh, in the uh, earlier in the uh, previous slide, um, you know, uh, we at least sort of have enumerated um, uh, some of the ones that exist and, and have an idea of what ones we want to support. But um, I don't think we have a consistent way to, to ensure that the projects we care about um, uh, have this. And Ellen brings up LLVM and uh, um, that's, all, that's on my plate to make sure that we get one set up. Um, so I told them we would, uh, I would, would take care of that and, and haven't managed to do it yet. Um, but uh, you know, they, they, for an OS to be listed as officially supported, um, this is for libc++ specifically, um, we need to provide a CI runner um, uh, for it. And so I think at the very, very least, we need to make sure that we know which those projects are um, that, that require that and figure out how to make it happen. Um, but um, how we make this sustainable, I think, is, a, is an open question. Um, So are we um, at the end of our, our time? Do we have any more discussion? Uh, we can carry on in the hallway track if we are. Um, I think we're, we're a little bit over, aren't we? Yeah, about, yeah, actually we probably should move to the hallway track. Um, we're, we have about 20 minutes left till the next presentation at this point. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you, Ed and Warner. I would encourage folks to go over to the hallway track you can talk about this or previous topics and we'll be back in about 20 minutes or so so we'll see you then <laughs>